Hey there, this is Akshay Nadan and welcome back to a new video and in this video we are going to continue with our matplotlib series and this video is going to be super super important because we are going to study the subplots and also the next thing we are going to study is saving your plots or saving your graphs into your local machine right and this video is going to be super important so stay tuned and if you have not followed me on my social media links you should follow it and you should also join my telegram channel where you can ask me personal doubts and uh, so without wasting more time, let's go to the coding part. So first of all, I'm importing the libraries and why do we need to use this subplot, right? So let's go step by step. And first of all, I'm defining this uh, uh, data that is study hours and marks. So these are the study hours that if a student uh, studies these many hours, he gets these many marks. Perfect. And now if I draw a scatter plot, now scatter plots, bar plots, we have already studied. So you should follow my uh, playlist in, in that manner only. Right. So if I draw a scatter plot, I can see that this is the scatter plot I'm getting. Okay. Let's say I'm a teacher and I want to explore the explore a student mentality. Right. So if he if the student studies these many hours, he gets these many marks. Right. So let's say I'm a teacher, teacher counselor. Right. So I can see that the number of uh, marks are directly proportional to study hours. Right. So okay, that's a good thing. So as many hours the student will study, he is going to get that those many marks. Linearly, uh, lean, uh, I can say that it is linearly uh, related. Perfect. Right. Now, let's say I want to draw a line plot. So, this is a scatter plot. Now, I am interested in drawing a line plot for linear regression, maybe. Right. So, I am drawing a line plot and I can see I have given it, I am using the plot function. We have already covered it and I am giving it red and I am drawing a dashed line. Right. So, I am giving it, uh, it the data study hours only. And as I can see, I can see that I'm getting this line. Yes, I'm getting this line. So this is the uh, plot function that is line plot. So, okay, two graphs I'm getting, but I can see that if I want to go to scatter plot and if I go to line plot, I have to just scroll this thing, right? Uh, everything is not in front of me. So, okay, next thing that is histogram. So if I'm drawing a, if I'm drawing a histogram, so this is the basic histogram that I'm getting. And histograms is there, then line plot is there, and scatter plot is there. So they are scattered, right? I can't get my data in front of me. And now, if I draw this scatter plot and this line plot, I can see that this is more clear now. But still, uh, my data is my all the graphs are not in front of me. So that's why we need to use this uh, subplots where I can draw all my graphs in front of me, as you can see, like this. So this is the importance, right? So how you can do it? So first of all, you need to define uh PLD dot figure so you can't use subplots without this figure so PLD dot figure i'm uh, drawing a 8 by 8 size figure and now this subplot so let me use the pen and let me uh yes so what is this subplot is getting it is getting 2 by 2 comma 1 so what is this 2 so first parameter is the rows second parameter is columns and this third parameter is your number that is index number right so this is index number 1 this is index number 2 this is index number three and this is index number four. So I'm drawing four plots. That's why two comma two, that is two. So two rows and two columns. So how it will be? It will be like this. First row, second row, first column, second column, right? And one, two, as you can see, it is one, it is two, it is three, it is four. That is first plot, second plot, third plot and four plot. Rest, everything is simple. What you have to do, you have to do the same thing. Just write this subplot statement before plotting the plot, before plotting the graph. So what I'm doing, I'm writing the statement. I'm just changing this one, two, three, and four. Rest is same. And the first is your scatter plot. So PLD dot scatter study as comma marks. The second is your line plot, same thing. Third is your histogram. Fourth is your that two graphs on each other, right? So scatter plot and line plot on each other, like this. So these four plots you have to draw. And if I see the output. And before going to the output, I'm also saving this. So first of all, let's see the output and then we will see on how you can save this plot. So this is the output. So I can see now my data is clear and now I can uh, forward this data to any uh, my uh, boss or I can say anything, right? Because this is the perfect plot because it is having all the plots on the same thing. Perfect. Now how you can save this plot on your local machine? So I'm using Google Colab and if you will be using this Jupyter Notebook, you have to so first of all, let's see the function pld.save fix. So this is the function that will be used for saving your figures, right? Now you have to define the location. So what I'm doing, uh, if, uh, that's because I'm using the uh, uh, Google Colab. That's why 
uh, I have to define the location of this thing only, right? So this is the location that is that slash content slash, and this is the name of your plot. So this will be name of your file generated, right? Subplot.png. This can be PNG. This can be JPG. It's totally up to you, right? So now the next parameters are your quality. So I'm using 100% quality and face color is K. Face color means your background color, right? So if I will use K, that means black color for your background. If I will use uh, blue, uh, that is B, that it will be blue. If I let me use K only for now, and uh, it it is going to save my plot over here, right? So let me run it again and let me show runtime run all. And if you will be using the Jupyter notebook, then you don't have to write the slash content slash. Then you have to define the name of your file location. Uh, let's say you, if you are saving it in desk, desktop, then you have to define then C, then colon, then slash slash, then desktop. You can copy it from my computer, right? So you can copy it from there. And then you have, at the last, you have to define the file name. And let me refresh this. And then as you can see, say uh, subplot.png. Then you have to click on these three things and, and then you have to download this. Then my file will be downloaded. And as you can see, on my downloads folder, I can see this plot like this wonderful thing, right? How this is how you can download it. Now, if I was talking about how you can save it on your Jupyter notebooks, then instead of that slash content slash that location, you have to go on any folder. Let's say I go to desktop and then you have to click over here and then you have to copy this path, right? So this is how you can, uh, then you have to paste it over here, uh, like this, like this, like this, like, right? So slash desktop slash, or you have to put this slash also. So slash desktop slash, then your name, file name, right? So this is how you can use it. Then you can put any background color. I put black only. So this was how you can use this subplots and saving of your figures. So I think this much is enough for this video. Till the next content, keep coding, keep innovating, and thanks a lot.